Now, what I liked about that, David, was that you did not force the blade. And the number one mistake that a lot of people make is they try to cut too fast and that loads up the gullet, doesn't give the blade a chance to carry away the sawdust. So now, as you swing this around, we're watching that blade drifting down. Believe it or not, more people get hurt when it's turned off, but it's still coasting down. So as you look at that piece of walnut, now who's this gonna be for? Jonah, my three-year-old. All right, so he can put fireworks in here. And yeah, cool exactly, things like perfect. That. <laughs> okay, so that's a chunk of air-dried walnut. And we have some sapwood up here, which is really pretty. We want to work with that. And so as I'm looking at the shape of this, we're gonna start high and we're gonna sweep through that sapwood and then we're gonna come back up like that. And with this quarter inch six tooth blade, it'll let you do that very easily. Now this is gonna be the bottom of the box. So on the bottom, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. On this side, we're gonna come down to a foot. We're gonna come down to a foot right there. That way it'll kind of make it look proud as it's setting okay. up, create some air. So I'll let you make those cuts. And here's the thing safety wise, and we're here with David of Popular Woodworking, as everybody knows, and I'm Scott Phillips of the American Wood Shop. Don't be reaching in there and adjusting the guide column when it's running. No. Make sure it's stopped. And here's okay. a big deal. People buy a good blade, they tune it up the right way, and then they forget to lock that column, which makes this yeah. a little wonky, yeah. and that tends to lead to drift. Number one reason for drift is a damage set. Number two reason is you don't have it tuned up the right way. Be sure to watch our seminar on that. So go ahead and make those cuts, keeping your hands to the table, and these are advice. All right. Okay, so away from the blade, column locked. Have fun. Now anticipate that drift a little bit, meaning give that blade a chance to finish its cut before you make the turn by using the side of the set to walk around the curve. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You, it's okay to tweak that blade sideways a bit. You let it catch up though. Exactly. And then you can walk it right around. I'm using the set of the teeth do a tighter turn. And as I finish that cut, All right. there's no burning there, that's sweet. And now do the same thing on your bottom. All right. Very good. You got it. And then crank it around pretty aggressively. Now, let me show you one thing. See, I'm, I'm not as first to put some side pressure on that blade. Yeah. And I'm not putting it into any serious stress here, but it's like a rudder on the ship. You have to sometimes, instead of it staying rigid this way, you have to work with the side of the set to get it to off the rail. So now, go ahead and finish that cut. And that's a really hard thing for people to master right there. But after you make a couple hundred of these, it'll be second nature. And then don't be afraid of really walking, crank that walk around and let that blade catch up to you. Your feet is just right. Excellent. I'll turn that off. And you reach around behind, that's a way to do it. And now, let's take a look at our bandsaw box as that blade comes to a stop. This is the bottom. And some of the Rikon blades or bandsaws have brick. Yeah. And that's a nice upgrade to consider, but we'll let that come down to a stop. And now, I want you to look at that grain pattern right there. There we go, we got that arch right in the middle. Right in the middle, and we've got some lighter colored sapwood right there. This is the bottom that makes it sit up proud. 
And so the next step on this, and you don't need a marking gauge for this, because your thumb and your pencil is the marking gauge, you lay in the thickness of cut by using your thumb and the pencil, just like that. And that will cut off the lid. This will cut off the bottom. You want them to be about three-eighths of an inch in thickness. And this is a piece of air-dried wood. And once you have those two pieces cut off, we can core it, cut off the locking tab, then we'll go on to gluing it up. So go ahead and we've got clearance, everything's locked. And finish Jonah's box for him. This All is right. good. You ready? Ready. come to a stop and I'll turn off the dust collector and now the cool thing about this is there's the lid and it's a perfect fit has to be okay now the bottom bring that up and that's a perfect fit. hey it works. You, you're a pro <laughs> now the next step to this once we have the top and bottom cut off we're going to save this and now, you always make your entry cut into the end grain. And that's where the growth rings are, right here. And that's so when you glue it back together, that entry cut virtually disappears. You mark the top. Okay, so that's the bottom. And some folks say, well, you should index the parts. Well, you do by just putting the pieces back together. You don't have to have the what if I forget pieces though? indexed. So this is the top, obviously because of the grain, that's the top right there. Okay, that's the bottom. And we're going to make the entry cut. Okay, that's the prettiest grain right here in the back edge of the end grain right there. And this is where it becomes free form. And to do this, you with it off, the band's all off, and whatever you do, make sure you always Read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with the tools and products you use in your wood shop. Work safely. And we are. We have safety glasses, hearing protection on. And now what we're going to do is free form. I want you to keep that blade. I haven't laid out any lines. I'll start the cut, and then I want you to just duplicate it and come back over to our entry cut. So look at how I have my hands positioned there, down to the table. And you never start the bandsaw. It's locked. You never start it with a piece of wood touching it. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start this and then I'm going to let you take over. Flat to the table. And you always, here's the plane of the blade. You always position your hands and your outside. fingers outside of the plane of the blade. And that way you will never ever get hurt. When you come to a curve, think about the radius of a half dollar. You can walk right around the corner. Now this is the end grade. We want to make that about half an inch thick because that could crack on the end grain. So I'm going to make one more turn here. And this is where it's okay to put some real torque on that blade to walk around that bend. Okay, now, I want you to do the same side of thing and come over here when you're, t here, I'll stop. Don't back out of the cut with it running. So okay. all yours, go for it. And do I end in a radius coming back into that? Yeah, and that would be back. So you want a radius right in here, and you want a radius out like that, right there. All right. A little bit more open, that deep side. So radius like that. Okay. Okay. All right. And this is going to be a tight curve 
So you're going to have to start making that bend now and swing it. Keep it feeding in slowly. Swing it tighter, tighter. Stop, stop. We're going to let me step in there a second. Now watch what I do. This is my pivot hand. I'm really going to put some side torque on that blade. You think, boy, I don't want to do that. See how that just walk right around yep. the bend? You can do that. You can force that. And that's how I want you to finish okay. your cut over on this side. You have good control down to the table. That's excellent. Perfect. Excellent. Now stop and hold it right there. Hold position. And I'll turn that off and we'll show everybody what's going on. Now as that's coming to a break, it started out of an old barn beam which was going on the burn pile. Oh yeah? Yeah, and so if you went to a woodwork store for a chunk of walnut like this, what would they charge you? It'd be like scary expensive. Never back out of a cut with the blade running. That could pull it forward. It hit the metal guard. Anytime metal blades hit metal parts, you're going to end up with a damaged blade and it will not track right. Now that's the top. So the next thing we're going to do is take the most stable piece of this top piece, put it down to the table. That's flat. It's not rocking. If it were not flat, you'd use wooden hand screw clamps, open it up, sure. clamp it down. That becomes your jig and hold it. But this is secure and you make a thin cut here. Let me grab that pencil like so. And you'll see why this is important. This is a locking tab. And I want you to carefully take that little sliver off of this chunk of wood, keeping your hands well away from the blade. So I will fire it up and All right. we'll get this done. Then it's on to the glue up. Hold that workpiece secure, flat to the table. He's a pro. He's got this. That's so good. Too much fun. Okay. Now, we've got all the parts. And from a safety standpoint, I love your technique. You're always reaching around and taking the strap off. You aren't going left and right of the blade. Always reach around and move it safely that way. Now let's go glue this up. All right, let's go. All right, Scott, I think I got all the pieces here. All right, now I like everything. I like the shape, it's standing proud. Beautiful grain right there. Don't sand it until we do this next step. So this is, ooh, wow, that was the bottom. Yeah, there we go. Oh, good grief. Okay, okay. Don't pay any attention to the man behind the camera. There we go. And so there's that beautiful grain pattern on the top. Yep. So the first thing we do is we take the walls, and there's an entry cut right there. Yep. And you take thick viscosity super glue, and you open that joint ever so slightly, and you lay a real healthy bead of cyanoacrylate adhesive in there, the thick one. This happens to be the Instabond by Tight Bond, and you exercise that joint. And what that does with gravity, it makes that glue go all the way sure. down into that joint there. You need just a hair bit more in there because your son is going to be hard on this. Yes, he will. And, you know, no telling what you're going to put in this when you give it to them. I mean, <laughs> you could fill it with a bunch of pennies, you know, It'd be nice and strong. But here, once I have that glue in there like that, I give it a shot with activator right in that cut and I draw it tight. And did you see what happened there? It's a chemical reaction. Yeah. And so that's curing out and I hold that for 15 seconds. And it's good to go. Now, some folks say, well, sh could you use ordinary wood glue with this? Problem is, it'd take it about 15 minutes to tack. There was a lot of pressure there. And that's done. All right. Okay. And you can sand the excess off. So now we put the top where it needs to be. And we have this locking tab right here that drops in. 
and it indexes to that cut, so it looks like you've hand carved that, right. okay? So the next thing we do is line all that up, get it all lined up, and then we give it a blast of activator on the lid, and you put the glue on your locking tab, like so. You just so. drop that right in there. That's the theory, let's see how this works. <laughs> okay. And before it cures, you want to make sure the walls of the box are lined up all the way around, and that looks good. You ease that off, and now you hold that tight without it skating around, and in 15 seconds, that's done as well. And I mean, can you see a gap there? No, that isn't me. And that's because you did a great job. When you started to cut, you kept it moving. Some people stop in the middle of a cut and that would create a little divot. Sure. Okay, so there's our locking tab for the lid. Let's see here. I did that before. It's, some people call these puzzle boxes. There's the <laughs> lid. Right. Okay, and then the final thing is to bring the bottom up and on, you do this. You put the glue on the thin walls, but there's activator over this area right there, so you want to stay clear of that until you come all the way around it. You know, this is all about having fun and being productive, and I have made thousands of these boxes in my day. Now I'm going to put a little bit of activator along the edge, just enough to tack it in place, and I can promise you I'm the hit of the party at Christmas <laughs> because everybody wants a Scott bandsaw box because they never know what's going to be in it, but it's a unique creation out of recycled wood. Great. Okay, now as I'm holding that together and making it tight, if there would be a bit of a gap along an edge, you just lay a little bit of glue in there, pack it with a little bit of matching sawdust, it's the best wood filler going. Yeah. Okay, and then the activator again, and it doesn't take much. And there you have a beautiful hand-sculpted bandsaw box. You no are, time. And you are a pro. All right. If it takes you more than five minutes to do that, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> All right. Now, check out the fit and finish. Nice. I like okay. how that top sits right in there. Do you Perfect. Think, uh, it does. It, it's, and show them the grain on that lid and yeah, the pattern on the lid nice. there. Uh, the way you sculpt it in. That's why I don't like to just make them square. I yeah. like to use that blade to do things yeah. like this, okay? This is one flat board that was an inch and three quarters thick, and I just tilted the table at three degrees, and I made an entry cut in the end grain, cycled around one after another after another, and then just glued that up. And then other things that you can do, this is actually three bandsaw boxes, okay? A high boy. This is one piece where I did a compound cut to cut out the ball and claw feet. And then to do the drawers, same Ooh, idea. Okay. okay. Those are all boxes in themselves. And then this was one box right here with the drawers right here. And cool. to cut out the drawers, just like you do a bandsaw box, easy to do. Just where do you come up with patterns? Well, you can go to the American Woodshop website for that for free anytime you want. And also this broken arch pediment right here, mm -hmm. that's one bandsaw technique as well. Now I use an eighth inch scrolling blade to get this fine detail. Yeah, we're pretty tight in there. Okay, and that's a very different setup. Now, you just bought a bandsaw. What are you doing with it? Right now, I'm pretty much just breaking down rough stock. Okay, here's my favorite project of all time. And I know your son will like it. <laughs> Boomerangs. Okay. He'll just attack his sister with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not, because he's come in at 60 miles an hour. That okay. could do some serious damage. So. Uh, be careful with that, but just feel how that yeah. works in your hand. Yeah. So if you want boomerang patterns, go to the website, check it out, follow the plan, right. and get out there and enjoy yourself. Cool. But most of all, realize the bandsaw can be tuned up with a good blade to do this and so much more. Yeah. Okay, there you have it. All well, right. until the next time. All right. Thanks Thank God. you, David. You're a pro.